since you know the masses, the ones that we're trying to change, since they all really, really, really believe in this objective science, so-called objective science, by the scientific community, made by those guys, isn't it one of our priorities to try and bridge the gap between well, the scientific community and the, and the, the time of the right in brothers, order to verify? At the time of the right brothers, the most acclaimed scientists used to write articles on why man can't fly. The Wright brothers never read that book until they built an airplane. Louis Pasteur was not a doctor, he was a chemist. No real change ever came from an established institution. They don't usually, hardly ever, back the research in science of really new radical ideas. They don't put money into it until the person does it and shows it to them, a product. They have to develop the product first. Which is generally have, the way right. it works. Which you guys have done. You, you've no, done exactly that. If we built that. the city, they might come and like it. But until then, they know nothing about it and they can't really judge it. So what we need is a new verification system, right? We, verify. Present, we ah. present our concepts. Yeah. And then the scientists will say, uh, uh, what you call a scientist or architect will say, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> you can get human nature. I don't want to get that. They don't study human behavior. They know nothing about it. And if I talk to psychologists, they don't talk. They say, what school did you go to? And they want to know whether you're a Gestaltist or whether Freudian, Adlerian, Skinnerian. There are different schools of thought. And they're all divergent. And they get into debates, which I'm against. I'm for dialogue, where you share ideas not try to win. When you try to win, that's subjective. So I think there should never be debates with one school and another. There should be the sharing of ideas or discredited. In other words, a person says to me, your wheels are too small on the airplane, you don't have enough wing area, then I can deal with it. But if they say it'll never fly, if they don't ask me how to propose to lift off the ground without wings, that's a proper way to speak. If you say, somebody says, do you think we'll ever get to the moon? The proper answer is, I don't know. It's, I know nothing about rockets and nothing about space travel. I can't answer that question. But if you hit specifics, I can deal with it. So is it correct to assume that what you just said is that you don't identify with anybody in the scientific community? No, I, know, I try to work with them. I can tell you what really happened at Douglas Aircraft Company. The guy that hired me said, the first three weeks you were there, you made more contributions to aviation than the history of aviation. Then he said to me, I want you to meet the chief aerodynamicist. That's the guy that studies how air flows over airplanes. He introduced me to him, but he told him that I did not agree with all of the Bernoulli principle. Bernoulli principle means that air, air flowing over the top of an airplane wing creates more lift than the bottom. And I built a unit to discredit that. And he told him that Fresco doesn't agree with the Bernoulli principle. And he came home and says, I don't even want to talk to you if you don't agree with the Bernoulli principle. A scientist would say, what is it that you disagree with? The man was, he was very famous. His name was Dr. Klein. He was an asshole. Because he would have said to me, what is it that you disagree with? And even if I was young, I was very young, at about 18, he was about 45. So he used age, rank, and notoriety. He was famous, well known. Yes. I met Norbert Wiener. He wrote the book called Cybernetics. I said, how about a cybernated society? He said, I wouldn't want that. I said, why not? He says, well, when I talk to people about my own concept, they didn't accept it. So I wouldn't want scientists controlling anything. So he had his own little niche. But I never met anybody that was open-minded. That's the word you use. I never met a person that said, how does your system work? Why is it round? What do you do in case of emergency? That would be a target. If you drop a bomb in the middle, the whole city would be destroyed. I can deal with that. But I can't deal with, it'll never work. I don't think I want to live in that thing. I can't deal with that. 
you have to point out your wing area is too small. Or in, um, if you, will, will the machines take over? They ask questions like that. Machines have no feelings, I think I've discussed that. We are all for bridging the difference between scientists or any other field or any other discipline. So it, I would say give it a try. Go to the academicians and, and present it and see, see the response. See what you can come up with. Yes, and the thing is, the, the problem I predict, I guess, is that they have a very strict means of verification, which they call the scientific.